So step one is a plain weave. To start off with a plain weave, we are going to thread the needle. There we go. We should have a small, a small side and a long side to the wool. Now with that long side, what we want to do, just turn over your weaving board and somewhere up near the top, we are just going to tie it on. So just tie a knot just like that and then what we are going to do is we are going to start weaving so a plain weave you are going under one of the warp strings over the next under one of the warp strings over the next under one of the warp strings over the next and just continue that pattern the whole way along so i'm just going to pull it through Push it up to the top and then I'm going to continue that the whole way through. So because it's went under, I'm going to go over, under, over, under, over until you get to the very end. And then you're just pushing that wool to the very top and then we are going to come round the back and do the same again and um, this time so it's under over under over under over we're going to do the opposite so because that one's gone under we're going to go over this one now so over under over under and each time you do a new row with the plain weave or with any weave you do the opposite of what's above I'm going to push that up so just double checking where I'm at because I've because this one here is under this one's going to go over so it's just the opposite of the row above but just the same the same pattern and then I'm going to go around the back again so because it's over I'm going to go under So double checking because that one's over I'm going to go under it and just keep yourself right just checking every so often that you are staying right and then I'm going to go behind the back so that's under so I'm going to go over Because that's under I'm gonna go over and then as that wool starts to run out I'm gonna stop now and then I'm just gonna tie it on to the back onto the warp string just to secure it in place if the string is ever too small we can just put a little bit of tape at the back to hold it into place and that is a plain weave so next I'm going to use a different tone of red um, we are going to stick with a plain weave but we are going to mix it up a little bit so I'm just going to thread my needle for this next technique
right so I've got a short end and I've got a long end using that long end just once again we are going to tie it onto the back we just tie it onto a warp string there we go so we are going to stick with a plain weave but we are going to mix up the pattern a little bit now so i'm just going to check that i've got enough strings for this so yeah okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to the last one i did there it goes under so i'm going to go over but i'm going to go over two this time under two over two under two over two so we've just mixed up the pattern and you should get a different texture from from this technique we go around the back so because it's over two i'm going to go under two so i'm going to do the opposite and in each row, again, we just do the opposite. Each time you do a row, you're going to push the wool up. Go around the back and do the opposite. But keeping the same pattern. And when you're pushing it up, you're trying your best to keep it nice and neat. Make sure that your warp strings are still nice and straight. Make sure you haven't got any gaps between the different rows. So because I've gone under, I'm going to go over this time. Under, so I'm doing the opposite. There we go. And I think I might get one more row out of this. So because I've gone under, I'm going over. And then I think I've run out of wool, so I'm just going to tie this off at the back now. You don't ever want it to get too short. So tie it off at the back as tightly as you can. If the piece of wool is quite long, just give it a snip so it doesn't get in the way at any point. And there we go, it's nice and neat, I'm keeping it nice and straight, pushing it up. There we go. So next I'm going to use this wool, I really like this wool, it's got like a little silver shine to it and I think it does look quite like muscles or veins is quite interesting so thread the needle short side and we're going to tie the long side onto the back and tie it onto this one this time
And there we go. You can always double knot just for secure, secureness. Right. So this one that we're going to do. I'm really going to change the pattern up now. Let me work this out. I'm not sure what that'll look like. So basically we're going to experiment with the plain weave before I show you the next technique. So this one I've not tried before. I'm going to go over five, under five and see how this one works out. So when you are weaving, a lot of the techniques you can come up with yourself. So I'm going to go around the back, but I'm going to do the opposite. So under five, over five. So this will be the last plain weave that we will do for a little while. One, two, three, four, This is quite a nice one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Going around the back. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Just make sure that your smaller length doesn't get tangled with the longer length and if it starts to all you need to do is just pull the needle and make that shorter side a little bit shorter so it's more like that and then keep going And then I'm going to tie it on at the back because I think I'm running out. So just a knot at the back using a warp string. And again, try and get it tight if you can. And give it a snip and then just start the front tab. So the next technique we are going to use is not going to be a plain weave. We're going to change to a different technique now. So I'm just going to get a different type of wool. So this is a fluffy a wool and a different tone. I'm going to snip that. And then I'm also going to get, I'm going to get a different tone of wool. And this time I'm going to use two strands of wool. So I'm just going to cut them the same length. And this time through the needle, I'm going to put two pieces of wool. Now, when you weave in, you can use as many strands of wool as you want. So we want a small side and then a long side. The long side, again, we are going to tie onto the back. Okay, 
Now this one that we're going to try, so I've gone over, so I'm going to go under. I'm just going to do one warp string. And then I am going to, rather than moving on to the next one, I'm going to loop over. So I'm just going to go around that warp string. Loop back around it. There we go. So we've got like a bit of a circle. So I'll zoom in for this one. Okay. So I'll go nice and slow. We go under the warp string. And then we go back round. I don't want it to knot, so I'm just going to take that through there. There we go. So, get that out of the way. I'm going under the warp string. Oh, my needles came loose. Let me show you that again, sorry. I've gone under the warp string. So I'm under it. And then I'm just going to loop back round. Okay. So under the warp string. And then I'm going to loop back around. Under the warp string. And then loop back under again. So under the warp string and then loop back. Under the warp string. Under and loop. Under and loop. Under. And then we go around the back of the weave board and we'll do another row. So under loop. Under and loop. Push them up. Under and loop. Under and loop. And 
and then keep pushing them up, keep it nice and neat. And then we're going to go around the back and I think I'm going to leave it there I'm going to tie off at the back So that is called a sumac weave and it gives a bumpy texture. So just to hold that in place, I quite like this colour here, this tone, so I'm going to come back to that tone. And I'm going to come back to that same pattern that I used so that was a plain weave but it was a five string pattern five warp pattern so I'm going under the warp string tie it on at the back and every time we use a new colour a new thread we just tie it on at the back so I'm going to hold it in place I'm going to go under five one two three four five Plain weaves are used quite a lot to hold other weaves in place, especially if they're a more um, intricate weave. So over five this time, we always do the opposite. I'm just going to push that up just to hold my sumac weave in place.
So under five, and this might be my last one. I think I'm running out. Just remember not to get that little length too small on the needle. I think that is my last one. So I'm going to push it all up nice and neat. And then I'm going to tie it back onto the back nice and tight. So now I'm going to pick another tone. I might go to a nice dark, darker tone again. Oh, let me have a look. I'll use this one. Yes. Quite like this one. This one. So I'm just going to cut some of this one off. So we tie it on at the back. So this one I'm going to try something a little bit different again. I'm going to play around with the pattern again. And I'm going to go, because that's under, over one, under two, over one, under two, over one, under two, over one. And see what this looks like i really like this string that i'm using because it's quite reminds me of veins it's quite wibbly wobbly i'll see what texture this comes out with so under one over two under one over two under one over two And pull it through. Because that's under, I'm going to go over. So over, under, over, under, over, under. And just stick to that same pattern. I'm not going to pull it too tight, I'm going to let it be loose because I quite like the wibbly wobbliness of this wool. So doing the opposite, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. I'm just loosely pulling it. Over one, under two, over one, under two, over one, under two, over one. Under one, over two, under one, over two, under one, over two, under one. I think that's my favourite texture so far. Over one, under two, over one, under two, over one, under two, over one. Under one, over two, under one, over two, under one, over two, under one. Over one, 
over, under, over, under, over, under. Oh, I've done that wrong. Let me work back. So over one, under two, over one, under two, over one, under two. There we go, that's right. And then I think I've got enough for one more row. And there we go. So now I'm going to move on to a darker tone, definitely. So this one again. I think I'm ready for this colour again. So this next technique, it's a really tricky one. Let's see. So we tie on at the back. This will be the hardest one that I will show you and the last one. So this next technique is called Raya Loops. So you make a loop in your hand. I will zoom in. You make a loop in your hand, that loop goes around the back of the warp string and then I move this string over here. So it goes around the back of the warp string and then you put a loop through it. And then you pull on the loop, I'm still holding the end of the string and as you pull on that loop you should be able to, if you pull the loop here, you'll make it longer. And if you pull this string here, you'll make it shorter. And then if you pull them both, you make it tight and it locks into place. So I will do this nice and slow. I'm just going to make it a bit shorter. I don't want them too long. So a loop, put it around the back of the warp string. And then a loop goes through. I want them the same size. So I am making a loop. That loop goes round the back of the warp string. Like that. And then you are going to put a loop through it. So if you don't understand this technique, I will go slow, but you can always just return to plain or sumac. So I am making a loop. It goes round the back of a warp string. And then I put a loop through it. So I'm making a loop, that loop goes around the back of a warp string and then you go through it. So I'm making a loop, it goes around the back of a warp string. And then I am going to 
put a loop through it. And again, I keep adjusting the sizes to make sure they're all the same height, uh, the same size. So I'm making a loop. I'll put it round the back of a warp string. And then I'm going to put a loop through it and pull on it. So I'm making a loop, putting it round the back of a warp string. And then putting a loop through it. And then I'm going to secure that in place. I'm just going to push them up for now while I use the end of the string. I'm going to go around the back and do one quick plain weave just to hold it into place. One or two if I can do two. Two would be brilliant if I can't. I think I can get two. So if I push them up, those can come down afterwards. So I'm going to switch to a different colour. I might go back to two walls now. So I might continue with this colour, but add another colour into it. I'm going to use a pattern of two.
over two, under two, over two, under two, over two. And push that up. Under two, over two, under two, over two, under two. Over two, under two, over two, under two, over two. Under two, over two, under two, over two. And then those wire loops can just sit on top and they can fall freely now. And my last draw, over two, under two, over two, under two, over two. And then the last thing to show you, there's lots that you can experiment with. You could do braids, you can try different materials. Um, one material I'm going to try is just some ripped up red material. It's like um, an organza material. So all I'm going to do with this, you can do anything. I'm just going to go over, under, over, under. Just a plain wave using the simple over one under one and just see what that looks like what you can do is squish it up to get a nice texture you can pull bits so they go thicker in areas and then all you would do is just tape it into place at the back or try tucking it under warp strings so I've just wrapped it around just to secure it into place And then if you want to squish that up, put a plain weave under it or a sumac, that'll hold it into place and just experiment. <laughs> 